Hi and welcome to the second section of this course, Project A, the collection game continued. This section completes the project by creating a coin object to collect and adding a timer system to determine whether the total game has elapsed. In essence, this section is about defining a system of logic and rules governing the game. To achieve this, we'll need to code in C-sharp, and so this section requires a basic understanding of programming. This section will demonstrate the following topics. Material creation, prefabs, coding with C-sharp, writing practice scripts, using particle systems, building and compiling games. Now we'll see the first video of section 2, creating a coin material. In this video, we'll learn how to create a coin material. The previous section closed by creating a basic coin object from a non-uniformly scaled cylinder primitive. This object was created by selecting Game Object, 3D Object, Cylinder from the Application menu. The coin object, as a concept, represents a basic or fundamental unit in our game logic because the player character should be actively searching the level looking for coins to collect before a timer runs out. This means that the coin is more than mere appearance. Its purpose in the game is not simply eye candy, but is functional. It makes an immense difference to the game outcome whether the coin is collected by the player or not. Therefore, the coin object, as it stands, is lacking two important aspects. Firstly, it looks dull and grey. It doesn't really stand out and grab the player's attention. Secondly, the coin cannot actually be collected yet. Certainly the player can walk into the coin, but nothing appropriate happens in response. In this section we'll focus on improving the coin appearance using a material. A material defines an algorithm specifying how the coin should be rendered. A material doesn't just say what the coin should look like in terms of colour. It defines how shiny or smooth the surface is as opposed to rough and diffuse. This is important to recognise and is why a texture and material refer to different things. A texture is simply an image file loaded in memory, which can be wrapped around a 3D object via its UV mapping. In contrast, a material defines how one or more textures can be combined together and applied to an object to shape its appearance. To create a new material asset in Unity, right-click on an empty area in the project panel, and from the context menu choose Create Material. You can also choose Assets, Create Material from the application menu. After creating a new material, assign it to an appropriate name from the project panel. As I'm aiming for a gold look, I'll name the material Matt underscore gold coin. Prefixing the name with Matt helps me know, just from the asset name, that it's a material asset. Simply type a new name in the text edit field to name the material. You can also click on the material name twice to edit the name at any time later. Next, select the material asset in the project panel, if it's not already selected, and its properties display immediately in the Object Inspector. There are lots of properties listed. In addition, a Material Preview displays at the bottom of the Object Inspector, showing you how the material would look, based on its current settings, if it were applied to a 3D object, such as a sphere. As you change material settings from the Inspector, the Preview panel updates automatically to reflect your changes, offering instant feedback on how the material would look. Let's now create a gold material for the coin. When creating any material, the first setting to choose is the shader type, because this setting affects all the other parameters available to you. The shader type determines which algorithm will be used to shade your object. There are many different choices, but most material types can be approximated using either standard or standard specular setup. For the gold coin, we can leave the shader as standard. Right now, the preview panel displays the material as a dull grey, which is far from what we need. To define a gold colour, we must specify the albedo. To do this, click on the albedo colour slot to display a colour picker, and from the colour picker dialog, select a gold colour. The material preview updates in response to reflect the changes. The coin material is looking better than it did, but it's still supposed to represent a metallic surface, which tends to be shiny and reflective. To add this quality to our material, click and drag on the metallic slider in the object inspector to the right hand side, setting its value to 1. This indicates that the material represents a fully metal surface as opposed to a diffuse surface such as cloth or hair. Again, the preview panel will update to reflect the change. We now have a gold material created and it's looking good in the preview panel. If needed, you can change the kind of object used for a preview. By default, Unity assigns the created material to a sphere, but other primitive objects are allowed, including cubes, cylinders and torus. This helps you preview materials under different conditions. 
You can change objects by clicking on the geometry button directly above the preview panel to cycle through them. When your material is ready, you can assign it directly to meshes in your scene just by dragging and dropping. Let's assign the coin material to the coin. Click and drag the material from the project panel to the coin object in the scene. On dropping the material, the coin will change appearance. You can confirm that the material assignment occurred successfully and even identify which material was assigned by selecting the coin object in the scene and viewing its mesh renderer component from the object inspector. The mesh renderer component is responsible for making sure that a mesh object is actually visible in the scene when the camera is looking. The mesh renderer component contains a materials field. This lists all materials currently assigned to the object. By clicking on the material name from the materials field, Unity automatically selects the material in the project panel, making it quick and simple to locate materials. The mesh renderer component lists all materials assigned to an object. That's it. You now have a complete and functional gold material for the collectible coin. It's looking good, however we're still not finished with the coin. The coin looks right but doesn't behave right. Specifically, it doesn't disappear when touched. And we don't yet keep track of how many coins the player has collected overall. To address this then, we'll need a script. Nice, we've successfully created a coin material. 